Welcome to my channel. In this video I will explain the development of the British armed divisions prior to World War II and their development during that conflict. It is well known that the British developed a dedicated tank force during the First World War. It is less well known that after the war the tank corps was trimmed down to a mere four operational battalions armed with 48 Mark V tanks each. Despite its small size, the Tank Corps was christened the Royal Tank Corps on November 13, 1923. It adopted the Black Beret, the typical rhomboid-shaped World War I tank, in its cap badge, and the regimental colors brown, red and green. These colors reminded the men about the struggle of the Tank Corps to break the deadlock of trench warfare on the Western Front from mud, through blood, to the green fields beyond. Despite the experience of the First World War, the Royal Tank Corps was quickly adapted to the needs of the British Empire to police its colonies. The Tank Corps had soon more armoured cars than tanks. In the beginning of the 1920s, the Corps created 20 armoured car companies. In the middle of 1927, the so-called Experimental Mechanized Force, or EMF, was created to test tank equipment and tactics. It had some 280 armored vehicles at its disposal. John Fuller, the former chief of staff of the tank force and a leading tank theorist, had published a groundbreaking article, Tactics and Mechanization, in spring of that year. Despite his pleas for a tank force, he declined the command of the EMF because the command also encompassed an infantry brigade and the training facility Titworth Camp. In 1927, the EMF was attached to an infantry outfit in a mass exercise against a similar force with an attached cavalry brigade. The latter, however, prevailed and the armoured force was suspended in 1928 because British High Command reasoned that nothing more could be learned. In 1930, the idea of armoured warfare was rekindled by the establishment of an experimental tank brigade, which consisted of three battalions of tanks and one battalion of machine gun carriers, which could act as a reconnaissance force. It was, however, not until 1933 that the idea of the tank brigade was wholeheartedly embraced by the British command in the person of Archibald Armour Montgomery Mustingbird, the new chief of the Imperial General Staff, not to be confused with the later famous Bernard Law Montgomery. The appointment of Percy Hobart as the new commander was the first act of Montgomery Mustingbird in favour of the tank brigade. The second was to change the tactics of the tank brigade from frontal assaults in support of the infantry to independent flanking and deep penetration in order to strike at enemy supply and command infrastructure in the rear. It was also Montgomery Mussingbird who formally incorporated the tank brigade into the roster of units of the British Army. The affection was mutual and the Royal Tank Corps offered Montgomery Mussingbird the title of Colonel Command of their corps, which he accepted. After a year tra of training with the new tactics, the tank brigade was joined by an infantry brigade to form the temporary mobile force in September 1934 for an exercise against the infantry division. The exercise did, however, not turn out well for the mobile force due to the partiality of the empires. Nevertheless, Messingbird had in mind to create an armoured division around the existing tank brigade by adding a mechanised cavalry brigade and supporting reconnaissance troops. This was however prevented by staunch cavalrists. In Egypt, the newly created mobile force against a potential Italian invasion in 1935 was also a pure cavalry affair. Even if the mobile division had been created following Montgomery Messingbird's instructions it would have been a cavalry force in armoured vehicles for reconnaissance and screening purposes in the service of the infantry 
not as a new branch with its own doctrine. The so-called cruiser tank, the new British tank design of the late 1930s, also reflected the influence of the cavalry on the development of the armoured forces. The cruiser tank was designed to be fast like the cavalry and it was slated to re-equip the existing cavalry regiments with tanks. From 1937 onwards, the mobile division was gradually transformed into an armoured division under the leadership of General Roger Evans, a cavalryman. The mobile division was initially reorganized into two cavalry brigades with each three battalions of light tanks, a tank brigade with three battalions of medium tanks and a support group. The support group consisted of two battalions of motorized infantry, a battalion of field artillery and a mixed anti-aircraft, anti-tank battalion and a battalion of engineers. In April 1939, the mobile division was baptized as the 1st Armored Division. In May 1939, an armored division was organized with one light armored brigade and one heavy armored brigade. The composition of the support brigade was not changed. The tank strength of the 1st Armored Division should have comprised 349 tanks, of which 159 would be light cruisers, 108 light tanks, 58 heavy cruisers and 24 close support tanks. The problem was that British industry could not deliver sufficient cruiser tanks to equip its units before the outbreak of the war and as a result the 1st Armored Division was not combat ready when the Second World War broke out due to a lack of training and equipment. It could in other words not perform its intended role as a rapid deployment force. In 1938, the mobile force in Egypt was also gradually reformed as an armored division in the command of Percy Hobart. Hobart put a lot of effort in training his new division with whatever equipment was at hand, including outdated Vickers Mark II tanks. Nevertheless, the division was woefully behind in, in schedule of re-equipment when the war broke out. In February 1940, the mobile force in Egypt was rebaptized 7th Armored Division and was organized along the new structure for an armored division for 1940, which was issued in April 1940. There would be no more distinction between the light and the heavy armored brigade, but both would be known as armored brigades, and the number of tanks was slightly downsized to 340. The engineer battalion in the support group was transferred and direct divisional command. Meanwhile, the first armored division was being whipped into shape for deployment in France, when the Germans unleashed their offensive in May 1940. At that time, the British Expeditionary Force had two armored reconnaissance brigades with 56 tanks each and the 1st Army Tank Brigade with 112 tanks. This meant that the Tank Brigade was below its formal strength of 175 tanks, which meant 57 tanks for each battalion and 4 tanks for the brigade headquarters. As said, the armored brigades conducted the traditional role of cavalry for reconnaissance with the exception of the 1st Army Tank Brigade. This brigade played a major role in the counterattack at Arras against the German advance towards the Channel ports. The British heavy Matilda tanks rolled over the German infantry and anti-tank positions with ease until they met fierce resistance from artillery and anti-aircraft guns. Eventually, the British tank brigade had to withdraw due to lack of support. The British 1st Armoured Division played only a minor role in the so-called 2nd British Expeditionary Force in June 1940. The division was rushed to France to stem the German offensive towards Paris, but it was only partly trained and under strength. It was practically overrun within a week and the remnants were evacuated to Britain. Its commander Roger Evans was relieved from command and given a posting at a training facility for the remainder of the war. The rebuilding of the division was done on the basis of the lessons learned from the Battle of France, in particular the lack of infantry support. In October 1940, it was decided that each armoured brigade would henceforth consist of three armoured battalions and one motorised infantry battalion, transferred from the support group. The support group 
would receive a battalion of lorried infantry and a mixed anti-tank and anti-aircraft battalions would be replaced by a separate anti-tank battalion and a separate anti-aircraft battalion. An armored division would also receive an armored reconnaissance battalion, except the divisions active in North Africa. The prominent role of the German tank forces in their victories in Belgium and France accelerated the process of raising new armored divisions in Britain. In the spring of 1940, there were two armored divisions which were formed before the war, and one, the second armored division, which was formed in December 1939. In the autumn of 1940, three more armored divisions were formed, the 6th armored division in September, the 8th armored division in October, and the 9th armored division in December. The first two would not see action until the end of 1942. And the third was basically a training outfit. With the end of the land war on the Western Front, the focus shifted to the Middle East, where the 7th Armored Division inflicted a heavy defeat on the numerically superior Italians in December 1940, taking tens of thousands of prisoners. Several weeks after the victory of the armored forces in the desert, the 2nd Armored Division began to arrive from Britain. This division consisted of 334 tanks, from which roughly half were Vickers Mark VI light tanks, and the other half were the new cruiser tanks. The division was however unfortunate, as it became overrun during the first German attack in March 1941, and even the divisional headquarters were captured along with the bulk of the division. In May 1941, it was formally disbanded, and it was not raised again until late after the war. This meant that two out of three British armored divisions committed in battle so far were smashed by the Germans in a matter of weeks. Despite these setbacks on the battlefield, four more armored divisions were raised in 1941. In March, the 11th was raised, followed by the Guards Armored Division in June, the 10th in August and the 42nd in November. The 11th and the Guards Armored Divisions would not see action until the Normandy Campaign in 1944, but the 10th was sent to Egypt in the summer of 1942. Meanwhile, the armored divisions in North Africa were restructured in February 1942. The support group was disbanded and the 2nd Armored Brigade was replaced with a motorized infantry brigade. The Armored Reconnaissance Battalion, which was added to the armored divisions in Britain in the autumn of 1940, was now also provided as a structural part of the armored divisions in North Africa. The new structure would also be adopted in Britain. All these changes meant that the combat tank strength became 183 main battle tanks, 18 close support tanks and 26 anti-aircraft tanks. The formal organization of the armored division was however not maintained in North Africa and the actual formation of the armored units in North Africa was based on the concept of the so-called brigade group. This formation was a battle group which was formed around the armor brigade. It would have the three regular armored battalions and on top of that a motor battalion, an artillery battalion, an anti-tank battery, an anti-aircraft battery and three batteries of howitzers. This meant practically the support group was broken up and divided among the armored brigades, which also happened in Britain, as we saw earlier. It was during the summer of 1942 that the British 8th Army in North Africa would receive the reformed 1st Armored Division, the 8th Armored Division and the already mentioned 10th Armored Division. Together with the 7th Armored Division, the British would have 4 Armored Divisions in Egypt in the second half of 1942. Three of those 4 divisions were put under the command of 10th Corps during the Second Battle of El Alamein in the autumn of 1942, but there would never be any formalization into an armored army corps. An important impetus for the armored forces was the appointment of Bernard Law Montgomery as the commander of 8th Army. By sporting the Black Beret of the Royal Armored Corps, he gave the armored force a boost in morale. In 1942, the armored division went through some changes by the addition of an artillery battalion to what effectively became the Divisional Artillery Command. Tank strength was established at 183 cruiser main battle tanks and 18 close support tanks, and a total of that 26 anti-aircraft tanks. The end of 1942 was in hindsight the high water mark of the British armored divisions 
with the raising of the 79th Armored Division in August under the command of tank pioneer Percy Hobart, which commanded a tank brigade in 1933. There were 10 armored divisions on the roster, of which 5 were involved in combat in North Africa. In April 1943, at the end of the North Africa campaign, the armored division went through some changes. First, the armored car regiment was replaced with an armored reconnaissance regiment, which was equipped with light tanks. The division became also more potent and mobile by the conversion of one artillery battalion to self-propelled guns. The tank strength was increased to 214 cruisers, 30 close support tanks and 34 anti-aircraft tanks. This increase was largely met by the supply of American tanks, which were gradually replacing British tanks as the main battle tank. The only division which would retain the British tanks as its main battle tank was the 7th Armored Division. The year 1943 saw the first downsize of the number of armored divisions by the disbandment of the 8th Armored Division in North Africa in January and the disbandment of the 42nd in October of that year. The 42nd never saw action, but its armor was transferred to the 79th Armored Division. The 79th Armored Division was formed in the aftermath of the Dieppe raid, when the need for specialized tanks for amphibious landings and overcoming fortified obstacles was felt. This division was therefore more an experimental outfit which would detach its subunits for amphibious assaults, clearing minefields and attacking fortified positions. Despite the mass tank forces in North Africa, only one division of this theater would see action in Italy in 1943. Two would follow in the spring of 1944. From the three armored divisions in Italy in the beginning of 1944, one was transferred to Britain for the preparation of the Normandy campaign. The 10th armored division did not see action after the conclusion of the North African campaign and was disbanded in June 1944. This disbandment was followed by the breakup of the 1st Armored Division in Italy in September 1944 before being disbanded as a unit in January 1945. In Great Britain, the 9th Armored Division, which never saw action, was disbanded in July 1944. In total, four armored divisions were slated for the Normandy campaign, if you would count the 79th Armored Division in. In March 1944, a new establishment for the armored divisions was established. There was an armored brigade with an attached motorized infantry battalion, there was a regular motorized infantry brigade, the artillery command and reconnaissance and engineer battalion directly on a divisional command, to which an independent machine gun company was added. The number of main battle tanks was increased by a dozen, while the number of close support and anti-aircraft tanks was decreased by roughly the same number. Besides, more than 60 light tanks were added to the order of battle. After landing in Normandy in June 1944, there were initially two armored divisions, which largely operated in the framework of existing army corps with infantry divisions. When the Guards Armored Division arrived in Normandy in July 1944, the three armored divisions were grouped under the command of British 8th Corps. The idea was to break out from the Normandy beachhead in a single armored truss under the codename Goodwood. The operation was however a failure and almost half of the British tanks were knocked out in the process. After that, two armored divisions were extracted from 8th Corps and assigned to 30th Corps, which became the spearhead of the Normandy breakout in August 1944. Its 11th and Guards Armored Divisions managed to capture Brussels and the strategic port of Antwerp in the beginning of September 1944. The British 30th Corps was the mobile corps of the British 2nd Army and it was destined to play a vital part in Operation Market Garden on September 17, 1944. British 30th Corps did however not manage to duplicate success earlier that month in this operation. In the battles that followed, the armored divisions played a minor and supporting role. There were no longer large concentrations of armored formations or dashing advances until the breakout after the crossing of the Rhine in March 1945. By that time, however, the German army was in the process of disintegrating. In the end, the British army ended the war with five armored divisions on the roster. If you like my content, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to get notifications for new content.